Hey, how's it going? I thought I would shoot a quick propeller video because I've been promising to do one for quite a while and I haven't gotten around to it yet. And on top of that, the weather's been pretty crap lately, so flying seems to be out of the question. So one of the first things I'd like to say is, I'm not an expert. I'm not a scientist, I'm not a physicist, I'm not an engineer. Um, I'm going to explain propellers as best as I understand them and I'm certain to get something wrong and when I do, <laughs> like I have to tell you, leave me a comment below. So obviously the main point of the propeller is to convert the energy from the engine into usable thrust for the airplane to make it move forward and it does that by being a, a wing essentially that rotates. You can see it's got that airfoil shape. It's flat on the back and curved on the front. And if you look carefully down along the profile of it, you can see that it actually has a twist to it. And that twist is so that the part of the blade that's in closer to the hub that's spinning slower, it's got more twist so it can push just as efficiently as the tip does, which is moving slower compared to the inner part of the propeller. So that's why it's got the twist. It's so that it distributes the load of thrust along the entire blade as it's rotating. Now your smaller general aviation aircraft like the Cessna 150, Cessna 172s, uh, Piper Cherokees, they typically have fixed pitch propellers and that just means that they're not adjustable. They are set for a good balance between cruise and climb and you just have to live with whatever results you get. So the pitch of the propeller is ultimately what determines the performance profile that the aircraft is going to have. An aircraft like this designed for short takeoffs and landings is typically going to have a pretty flat pitched or fine pitched prop. Aircraft that are a little bit faster are typically going to have a coarser pitched prop and that just means that its angle of attack is higher. The pitch of the propeller will also determine the operating range of your engine. A coarser pitched prop compared to a finer pitched prop on the same engine, the coarser pitched prop will let that engine run at a lower RPM, where the finer pitched prop will let that same engine run at a higher RPM. So you can use the pitch of the propeller to allow you to get that engine in its optimum operating horsepower range. As most of you probably already know, engines operate best at certain RPMs. You'll get your peak horsepower at a certain RPM and your peak torque at a certain RPM. If you can pitch your propeller so that you can hit that peak at a specific phase in flight that you're looking for, you can optimize your aircraft's performance. So coarser pitched props typically give you better cruising speeds, but at the expense of your takeoff performance. You aren't going to accelerate as quickly and you're not going to climb as quickly as a propeller pitched more finely. So a fine pitched propeller is going to give you really good takeoff performance, really good climb performance, but you're not going to get faster cruise speeds with it. So you can sort of make a comparison between pitch and say the gears in a car's transmission. The lower the gear, the finer the pitch. The higher the gear, the coarser the pitch. So a fine pitched propeller will give you good acceleration, just like first or second gear in your car. Whereas your fourth and fifth gear is gonna give you better cruising speed, but you're not gonna be able to accelerate very quickly. So we talked earlier about how the propeller is essentially just a wing that's rotating to produce lift but in a horizontal plane as opposed to a vertical plane. So when the airplane's standing still and the propeller's rotating, the air is hitting the propeller dead on from the top. It, the air is not really hitting the propeller, the propeller is hitting the air, but it's easier to demonstrate this because the propeller is currently not moving. So as the plane's sitting still, the air is hitting it straight on, which is a pretty high angle of attack. Now as the plane starts moving forward through the air, you would think that the air is now hitting the propeller from the nose as it's flying through the air. And, and it's hitting the plane on the nose, but it's hitting the propeller at an angle because of course that propeller is rotating. So when that propeller is rotating and that air is coming in on this angle, you can see now that the angle of attack of the air is now less than it was when the plane was sitting still and the air was hitting it dead on. So what that means is, as the propeller begins to move forward through the air, the angle of attack is decreasing. 
Consider an airplane flying in a nose high attitude, but not gaining any altitude. It's just sort of mushing along like this. The wings aren't creating very much lift relative to how much drag they're creating. So it's not going to be very efficient. That same airplane, if you level it out, it's going to be much more efficient and go much faster. The same principle applies to the propeller. When it's standing on the ground before you've taken off and you run it up to full RPM, you're not going to get full RPM because the propeller is at such a high angle of attack. As the airplane begins to accelerate, that angle of attack decreases, allowing that propeller to become more effective, which reduces drag and gives you better efficiency as you fly. So if you start out with a propeller that has a relatively flat pitch, you're going to get really good acceleration and takeoff. But when you level off and you start flying, the propeller is going to sort of run out of bite. As the airplane accelerates forward, that angle of attack that the propeller is meeting the air has gotten to the point where it can no longer produce enough thrust to help you continue to accelerate. Whereas an airplane with a really coarse pitched prop is going to have a hard time getting off the ground because it's really paddling that air, trying to grab it and push it back and it's not being very efficient at it. But once it gets up into the air and builds up its cruise speed, all of a sudden that propeller begins to become a lot more efficient. Its ability to push air behind it is increased and it lets the airplane fly much faster. So as you can see, unless you have the ability to change the pitch of the propeller in flight, you kind of have to decide what it is that you're after. Do you want to go fast or do you want to be able to get off the ground really quickly? So the reason you see propellers like Warp Drive and Ivoprop and CGS on so many different types of plane is because they're versatile and they're versatile because they're adjustable. With a warp drive, you simply loosen off these bolts here and the entire propeller blade will spin in the hub, allowing you to set it to the exact pitch that you want. Now to do that properly, you need to use a fancy little protractor like this, which allows you to set each blade individually. The downside to that is it's a little bit of a finicky process, but the upside is you get the propeller pitch just exactly where you want it. So this is an Ivo prop and it has three blades and they're all connected in the center and it doesn't look like it's ground adjustable but it is and it's by using this nut and this uh, well, center piece. On the end of each of the blades is this cam thingy-majigger. Pretty sure that's a technical term. And there's a rod, a metal rod that goes down that propeller blade and inside and there's a hook on it. And that hook kind of sticks out like this and as you twist this end of it that introduces either more or less twist to the blade. So the entire blade twists, meaning that the blade is quite flexible. So with this one, there's a little electric motor that's hooked up and it goes to a couple of wires that go into the cockpit and Mitch can adjust the pitch of his propeller while he's flying. Except that those wires don't, don't go anywhere, it's not hooked up. So this is actually just a ground adjustable. Mitch needs to get a couple of extra parts to make it in flight adjustable again. So that little cam there is engaging this little collar and the electric motor here spins back and forth and that will either put more torque or less torque on that cam which will either spin the prop coarser or finer. So that same collar in there is also found on the ground adjustable ones, but it's just attached directly to this centerpiece. So as you twist this, that's what moves that collar in and out, which introduces the twist to those blades. You then just lock it down with this locking nut, and then uh, I just wrap a few wraps of electrical tape around there so that if that does decide to come loose, it's not going to go flying off the airplane. It'll just sit there, and my prop will just be out of pitch until I come in and land. So the advantage of an Ivo prop is that you can quickly and easily adjust them simply by moving that one centerpiece. The downside to them is you can't tweak each blade individually if it isn't pitched exactly how you like it. Here's an example of a two blade Ivo prop. So you can get them in two blades as well. What you have to do is get these little blocks here that fill in the extra gap but Dave has a two blade set up. If he were simply to buy a third blade, he could take out these blocks and just pop in a third blade and he'd be off to the races. So one of the more common questions I get asked is two blades versus three blades. What's the difference and why would you go with one over the other? 
A two-bladed propeller has to absorb more horsepower per blade than a three-bladed propeller. So we have a 50 horsepower Rotax 503 on this plane with a two-blade prop. So each propeller has to absorb 25 horsepower. Whereas this Rotax 503 with also 50 horsepower has three blades on it. So each of these blades has to absorb just a little bit under 17 horsepower. So with two identically length propellers, the two blade prop is gonna have to have more pitch in each blade than the three blade prop. The three bladed propellers are gonna be pitched a little bit finer. And if you remember from the earlier part of the video, a finer pitch prop is going to give you better takeoff and climb performance where the two bladed prop is going to give you better cruise performance. So another reason why planes with two blades on the prop versus three go a little bit faster is that remember that the propeller blades are just wings that are creating lift and remember that when you create lift you create drag. So when you have three blades versus two you have three blades worth of drag instead of two. So that's an increase of drag which uh, will slow the plane down a little bit when you're cruising. So why would you use three blades instead of two? Well, aside from the reasons we just talked about, three bladed props run smoother. I don't know why. Now, this seems to only apply on pusher aircraft. On tractor aircraft where the propeller is on the nose instead of in the back, it doesn't seem to make as big of a difference and I'm not 100% sure why that is. So some of the theories I've come up with, whether or not they're true, I don't know, you guys can feel free to let me know in the comments what you think of them and of course add your own theories or even reasons if you know what they actually are. Um, Three bladed propellers may simply be a little bit more immune to being slightly out of balance and so maybe we just don't notice them being out of balance as much and so they run a little bit smoother. The other thing to consider is that on a pusher style airplane, part of the propeller is in dirty air. You can see that only the air passing over the top of the wing is going to be clean and then you may get a little bit of clean air here on the side but for the most part anything down here behind the fuselage is going to be dirty air. So if you consider that with a three-bladed propeller, you're going to have 33% of that blade exposed to either clean or dirty air at a time, whereas with a two-bladed prop, you're going to have 50% of the propeller in either clean or dirty air. And maybe just the frequency of the propeller blades passing through clean and dirty air allows for either more or less vibration. The other thing that I've thought of is that with a three-bladed propeller, you have three streams of rotating air, one coming off of each blade, coming back and hitting the tail. And with a two-bladed propeller, you have two streams of rotating air coming back and hitting the tail. And maybe the, the two versus the three, um, three smaller ones versus two bigger ones, maybe that contributes to vibration? I don't know. I'm not 100% certain why three-bladed propellers on pusher airplanes often tend to be a lot more smooth than two-bladed props. But it's been my experience and been the experience of others around the airport as well. So I don't know. What about you? Have you experienced either? And can you tell me why? Because I really don't know. I just have some theories kind of grasping at straws, but it doesn't really matter because three blades are smoother so I run three blades and I run an airplane that I want good climb and takeoff performance so I'm not missing that cruise performance much I <laughs> didn't buy an ultralight to go anywhere fast so there it is that's the end of my propeller video I hope it wasn't too long and I hope it was interesting and maybe you learned something and <laughs> hopefully I didn't mess up too many things if I did of course just leave me a comment below and I'll see what I can do about fixing it. Also, if there's any other topics you'd like to see me cover um, about these types of uh, airplanes or engines or anything else related to it, let me know and I'll see if I can put together a video for that. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed and um, we'll see you next time. Hopefully there'll be some flying in the next video. Later.